Welcome back everyone to our gameplay series of Transport Fever 2. And just as we come online here, you can see we have got new vehicles coming at us as technology continues to progress at a quicker and quicker rate. We're now in the year 1971 and we have 510, 511 million dollars. If we click there, uh, one of the things we have not done is set down a headquarters. We have not built a headquarters. I really haven't seen much of a reason to do that unless you are a completionist and you really want to get um, everything done, all the achievements and all that type of thing. But uh, you do have the ability to build a, an HQ. I just haven't figured out a good reason to do it. So let's take a look at kind of where we are right now. We are in the 13 to 14 million per year in income range, which is certainly not the greatest in the world, but uh, it's making us plenty of money pretty quickly. The breakdown of that is our road vehicles are making us about 4.6, railroad almost 9, and you can see the airplanes uh, have been making a little bit of money, but that has fluctuated from time to time. If we come in under the line statistics and go over here, you can see we're still making money on this. We might actually have one more plane than what we need, just judging from uh, the general look of things as it has worked out uh, here recently. Uh, and in fact, let's see, that one is just landing. That one is, I was going to say, if we could find one, we would take a little closer look at it. But we'll come back to that. Uh, because what I really want to do in today's video is something we haven't done in a while on a real large scale. And that is come in and just sort of take stock in where we are and let's just see what's working and what isn't. Now, it's not surprising me that we see some lines losing money, but none of them are really losing tons of money. And in general, as I look through these, these are the smaller cities that we're not really doing any business with on cargo, which means that they're not really growing. So that's perfectly fine. That doesn't bother me. I also see the Costa Mesa Airport route is losing just a touch. It's basically hovering right around that break-even point. Sometimes it goes a little above it, sometimes it goes below it, but basically it's hovering right in that range. And you can see it on the screen here, jumping around quite a bit. I'm not worried about that. Its primary focus is not really to make money for us so much as it is to make sure we can keep a steady flow of buses coming into and out of the airport moving passengers. So that really doesn't bother me. If we move this the other way, you can see the airline is doing okay. Maybe not the best it could possibly do. Uh, and the reason for that is something that we actually looked at uh, last time. But I want to come back to that really quickly here. And that's something when we were uh, purchasing. Now, we didn't have the Boeing in here at the time. So we were dealing with the Comet or the Lockheed Super Constellation. And if you remember, we talked about the difference in not only the upfront price, which is certainly different. You go from 4.9 to 8.4 million, so a good difference in price there for not much of a difference in capacity. But the big thing that really hurts your profits year after year is this upkeep, this maintenance. 1.4 million as opposed to 831,000. So you can see 600,000 per plane per year. I mean, that is a huge amount of difference. So what I want to do here is, and again, it's going to cost us some money, but we got plenty of that. So it's not a huge uh, issue for us. Let's go ahead and let's change this around a little bit. So we've got six of these. I am actually going to swap these out and have a little fun with this one. Now we could go down to the Boeing, but you can see it's still 1.4 and the difference in speed is negligible. Capacity is actually a little bit less. So not a huge difference. We're going to actually take a step backwards and go back to the Super Constellation. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's see if we notice over the next few videos any differences in uh, our line. Now, as we come back over, you can see, I mean, we still have a very high capacity. It changed it a little bit, but not a huge amount. What we want to see is if this number climbs up around five, six, seven million, something along those lines, simply because we have a lot less cost in the line. Okay, so if we zoom back out, 
Now let's go and let's look at our trains. Now we haven't given the trains any love in quite a while, actually. So we notice they're all making money to some extent, some more than others. Uh, and the crude, of course, is leading the way. Not terribly surprising there either. But uh, we've got some older trains. I mean, we've got 10 wheelers in here, which I would imagine is not even available any longer. Let's actually take a look at that. What do we have as far as steam train? Yeah, we're, yeah, these are long gone. Uh, you can see the big boy here, which cost an absolute ton per year, but it has some nice tractive effort. That is a really nice amount there. Uh, other than that, you can see it's a good bit more than these others, but you're certainly paying for it. We now have some electric trains that are available. And again, I'm going to compare these in price and tractive effort to the big boy. So 135,000 for tractive effort, 2.8 per year. Yeah, that is a huge amount. But if we come into the electric, uh, you can see comparable here, not quite as much tractive efforts, uh, but 2 million per year there. We go down in tractive effort for not really a reduction in cost. And then down even more. So the electric trains, other than the EP2 model, really don't have a lot of attractive effort. Uh, they're built more at this point for speed. But then we come into the diesel versions. Now this, if I remember correctly, is the very first diesel we had uh, access to. So it's certainly not going to be up to standards. But then we take some nice jumps until we get up to the EMD. And that, 92,001.8. So it still looks like if you need something heavy duty, something to carry tons of cargo, then the big boy is not a bad platform. You just have to make sure you got the capacity uh, that you need for that. That is a huge amount. But you've got some diesel alternatives that can save you some money and still do fairly well for uh, their uh, pulling capacity, their towing capacity. And where I have noticed that uh, is an issue is, again, as you scroll across the map, you'll start to know these icons by heart. You'll just notice these and we'll zoom in here and you can see we've got this train coming in. It's got plenty of capacity, but it's not using all of it. So 52 is really all we needed right there. Uh, and that's why we got this second line which is, let's see what the train is actually doing. Okay, so a capacity of 60, so pretty good there. All right, so we've got some room here actually on train six that we could do some work on it. Now, what about on the other side of things, the food? Oh, wow, 197. All right, so clearly we don't have enough capacity here. Yeah, we started out small at 35. So let's go ahead and improve that. So we're looking at train seven, and let's see what that comes out to. We want trains, and this is, oh wow, this is this is the general. So yeah, we haven't given these guys any love in quite some time. So we could always uh, increase here, but we're going to go ahead and upgrade this one. We're going to get a new train and everything. We could probably get by with just editing it uh, and doing okay that way, but let's just go ahead and move beyond that. So what I think I want to do, we don't need a huge amount of tractive effort. So this GP9, this EMD model here is looking pretty good, uh, quite frankly, for its cost savings. Let's look at the electric. All of those are, yeah, all of those are really expensive. And we really don't have a steam option that is fairly inexpensive. So I'm liking this, the GP9, has, I believe, enough tractive effort for what we're going to need. We don't need a huge capacity. We're not talking 200 of the food in capacity. So I think it's going to save us some money while allowing us to go ahead and upgrade. So now we need to come into our cargo units. And we're going to want food, which is the box car. Yeah, there it is. Capacity is 18. Uh, so we were already at around 35 Let's go ahead and go up to 72. Uh, I am tempted to go up higher than that. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do one more. Let's get up to 90. I think that's actually too much, uh, but let's go ahead and do it. Let's see how quickly 
uh, this number drops down below 90, which is our current capacity. Right now, it's going to take a few a few loads to get there. Uh, but if we come in under the city itself, so let's come into Surprise. We have 593 people, a huge amount of growth since we first started. We're doing great supplying uh, the construction material or the bricks, as I call them. So we're about 90% there, but we're only at about 50 to 60% on the food. So we've got a lot of room for growth here. And that's something I was looking at before I started the recording and really, really has helped out. Now, the other side of this is, do we have enough capacity on our deliveries as it looks like we're still using the horse and buggy there? Okay, so let's actually look at that one. Again, using the horse and buggy from a technology perspective is obviously so far outdated by this point, but it is admittedly quite a bit of fun for me. Uh, so let's go into the vehicle manager. We want uh, the food two is the one we want. Uh, we got six vehicles. Wow, that's a lot of vehicles. Let's go ahead and just start out by replacing all of these. Now we want cargo. And of course, we had a capacity of probably five, maybe six. I can't remember what those give us. So we don't want to go here with uh, the full big rig, even though it has a nice capacity on it. Uh, we really don't need that within the city. So I'm thinking maybe the man... Uh, that seems like a better alternative. I'm not even sure we need that much. Uh, the Studebaker is still not bad. Let's see. Yeah, it is much less uh, as far as upkeep. Don't really care about the upfront cost. That's not really an issue, but the upkeep will be. Uh, what about the Opal Blitz? A little bit less, but not a huge amount. I think we'll go with the Studebaker here. 1.5 million. Of course, that's going to greatly increase our capacity because we've increased the capacity on the train as well. So let's see how this works out. I'm actually going to give this a minute. See, we got a new train uh, available. So we've got 43 sitting here. And let's pare this down a little bit. Okay, so capacity is 84, so we're going to quickly start using that up. And the key is, are we keeping this low enough? And right now you can see it's basically done before the train gets back and drops off. Okay, so I think that's going to be uh, certainly enough capacity. If anything, it might be one too many trucks. Yeah, that's looking like that's going to be the case. We're certainly not overloaded here at the station. So what I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and sell this guy. Oops, not that. Uh, go ahead and sell him. That will bring it down a little bit, save us a little bit of money, uh, and we'll leave it at that for right now. So as we back our way out, come back to our trains, and let's look at all of them. Uh, so crude is doing great. Wheat is doing great. You can see it's very near capacity there. Uh, surprise food, yeah, it's going to jump up there because we've added that capacity, uh, which reminds me, actually. All right, so this guy is on his way back, and oh yeah, there we go. So we're only at around 50 when he picks up this time, so we definitely have excess capacity in uh, this train. So in order to figure out this, uh, do we need to back off of that capacity? Well, we need to figure out how things are going on the other end of the spectrum. So if we look here, uh, we really don't have any any backup here. You know, if, if we were seeing wheat here that was like, you know, 200 like we've seen before, then that would be a big issue, but we don't really see that. So what I think we want to do going forward is I think we want to try to push this by bringing in more wheat from over here. So we've got our station already here. So let's go ahead and expand it. Uh, let's get another platform. We want cargo, of course. Okay, now let's add tracks to our platform. Oh, you're killing me here, game. You're killing me with these pop-ups. Uh, we need to come back in here and get one more set of tracks. There we go. 
Now we're good. And so now we need to come over. This is going to be a fairly short. Uh, we'll do a terminus station. And let's see, where do we want to put this? Uh, I'm actually thinking I might want to snug it in right there. I see. Oh, wow. We got a lot more available there. The, the Chevy C60 truck. I want to see what the capacity is in that because that looks like a very good option long term for us. All right, I actually might be able to sneak it in right over here. That way we don't have to cross over the road. Uh, but yeah, we don't have a ton of room and I want to get as close as I can to the actual factory over here. So let's try to do something like that. Wow, I don't want to get rid of this field. So I want to basically get over as close as I can without doing that. Let's do something like that. Uh, high speed, we don't really need just yet. All right, so immediately it wants to jump across. Let's see how it does this. Nope, don't want to do that. Yeah, this is this is certainly not working out wonderfully because I'm going to have to. Yeah, I don't like this. Let's just come back and let's get rid of this. And let's try this a different way. This is a very tight spot to, to be trying to fit this in, admittedly. But let's go ahead and drop, drop it about right there. Uh, let's make our road connection before I absolutely forget about that. All right, let's do that. A little bit longer of a road than we actually needed. But now we want tracks, and again, we don't really need... This is still going to be... Oh, why do you want to do that? I don't want you to do that. So we're going to... Okay, that'll give us the ability to go a little bit straighter. Uh, not quite the speed. You can see toward the end here, it s slows down a little quicker than I would prefer. Uh, but that's probably about as good as we're going to get, given the restraints we have with some road networks nearby. Okay, so not the end of the world. I think we can live with this and, and get by. All right, so now rather than trying to connect on... To another depot. Let's just go ahead and drop one out here again. It doesn't cost that much money. So we're not going to spend our time and money worrying about it. We'll just drop it over there and then connect it up with our network and we're in business. So this guy is ready to go. Let's go ahead and set up our line. Okay, there we go. And so we want... Surprise wheat, and we'll call this two. I assume that's... Oh, wow, we've already got two. Well, that's interesting. How about that? Uh, for now, rather than me trying to piece together this puzzle, we'll just go ahead and make this one three. That way they'll be nice and neat there. So what is one... Okay, so one is there, two is here, three is there. Okay, I just now realized I had forgotten about this one up at the top. How about that? Believe it or not, I actually did forget that that one existed. Okay, then. So that's what we'll do uh, right there. Let's go ahead and we'll start out uh, pretty tame here. Let's see, what did we get... The new one, yes, yeah, still 2.9. I think it's still, tractive effort is very little. Uh, probably more of a passenger carrier than anything. So I think we'll stick here with the GP9. And so now we'll come to cargo. And I believe it's a gondola we want. Yes, it is. Uh, actually, let's get back. We'll go 30. No, we can't go 36. Let's go 54. All right, so we want, where is it? Surprise wheat two. 
which is actually three. Here you can see we've already got some lined up here. It's going to start to fill up. And for that reason, I'm just going to let this guy go all the way to the end and come back to give it a little time to see how much demand we're going to have at this one. So not quite as much demand as I was hoping for. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're at 40 here or thereabouts. So we got some extra availability for supply on that train here. Looking pretty good. So we're going to be around 40 for the first delivery. And our capacity is 54, so not bad. Not bad at all. We've already incurred a little bit of cost just from making the empty trip, the, the deadhead trip. Okay, I like that. All right, so we've gotten some things done. Let's actually come over. Uh, let's take a look at something here on the roadside. So these, oh yeah, this is at capacity right now. So from Surprise to Rancho Cucamonga, we need to expand this. All right, so let's come in down here on this end. And passenger, uh, let's see, we've been, oh wow, a couple of nice looking airplanes. So we've been using the twin coaches for this. Let's see what kind of upgrades we've got. All right, capacity really isn't upgraded very much, but of course the speed is. And that is a huge thing. So going from 31 miles per hour to 50 is a big deal. So let's start there. Uh, let's actually start there. So we've got seven vehicles. Let's go ahead and upgrade all of those to the Chevy, which is actually a little bit cheaper. Uh, the capacity, wow, I don't like the capacity went down. And the man, you can see that model also goes 50 and it's got increased capacity. Let's go this way. It costs more, no doubt. But I think that's the better route for us. Let's go with the, uh, the man model. Give us a little bit more capacity as well as speed. So in the long term, hopefully that'll be the perfect way to go. All right, so we've increased our capacity a touch. Now let's see about some of these others. Uh, again, making very nice money with some of these. Now with the bus network here in, in this town, uh, we're making money, 100 grand, but we're running at about half capacity. I'm wondering if maybe we should... Uh, reduce our numbers here. That will hurt our frequency, but uh, not something we're going to do just yet, but probably something we will do in the future. Now let's move on to the bricks, which I believe, yes, are on sort of the, the northeastern part of town. So we've got a ton. Yikes, that is absolutely a ton. So how is this working? How are we transporting this in? Are we doing this... All right, so the train is bringing in the bricks into here, which, well, if we can get it to do it correctly, there we go. So we got a little over 20 there, and we got a steady flow of, we still got the steam trucks over here. That is awesome. And the steam trucks are taking care of it. All right, so the bricks, we need more capacity on the brick side of things. So we need this train that's bringing the bricks down. What does he have capacity? He's got 60 capacity. What do we need in here? Um, okay, so they've grown some more, so we've got a little bit more room. Okay, that's not bad, but we need a lot more capacity, I feel like. All right, so this is train five. All right, train five. Let's go ahead and add some capacity to this guy. All right, so bricks, he's probably using the older model of, of these. Let's go ahead and let's just get rid of all of these and make sure he has the flat car for the bricks. And he's got 18 capacity here, so we'll get to 60 pretty quick. Uh, let's move up to, let's do 90 again. 90 is probably a little bit more than we're going to need. 
but we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see the change is instantaneous. I like that. And then we'll simply, from time to time, come in and see how these numbers are doing. I expect them to come down pretty quickly. So now that leads me into our next thought is, do we have enough rock coming in? We've got 209. Uh, so this is train number four. All right, so train four, let's go ahead, highlight it and edit it. Now again, we could purchase a brand new one, but I think we're gonna be able to get by, uh, let's see, what does he have, 60? Yeah, I think he's gonna be able to get by by just adding some additional ones. Uh, now we're gonna get the newest model, that much we are gonna do. Let's see, so he's using rock, which should be, what is that, the gondola? Yeah. Uh, let's get him up to 90 as well. Uh, actually, no, let's go a little bit further than that. Let's see, that looks pretty good. We'll give that a shot and see how well that works out. Make sure we're not overburdening uh, our train. The train's not going to go too terribly fast anyway because it's one of the, the early models in the game. Uh, but it's still gaining speed as it heads down toward the station. So yeah, I think we're perfectly fine there. We're not overburdening that train. And it should be just fine. So we're expanding the supply of rock that we're bringing in. We're going to end up supplying, uh, excuse me, increasing the supply of our bricks. Wow. Okay, come on, let me click on it. There we go. So 90 is our capacity there. And what do we have waiting? 177. So a little bit lower, I believe, than what we were at before. Uh, but again, something we'll want to keep an eye on. Now we need to come down to the station because all of this increased uh, supply is going to ultimately lead into, I would imagine, an increase in uh, supply here at the station. Uh, but right now it looks like we're actually doing pretty good. I do want, uh, however, if I could hit the right one, I do want to hit an upgrade on this one. We've got seven vehicles uh, and each one, what is its capacity? Six. All right, so we can definitely, definitely increase that. If we take a look at what we've got for cargo right now, I mean, we can blow that away. And without using uh, the, the tractor trailer rig, which is 25. Uh, let's see, what about the man? That's at 17. I believe we could do this job with the man. Uh, what about the Studebaker? Not bad. Let's go with the man. But first, we don't need seven of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of three of these. Okay, so we're gonna sell off those. Now we got four remaining. We come in and we choose the, where is it? There it is. We want the all cargo types, even though you don't necessarily have to have that. But now let's take a look at what our capacity is. So we've got, yeah, we've got tons of capacity and we're gonna be quicker too. So that's always very nice. So let's see what, what happens here. As you see this increase, so we're up to 45. And these guys should make pretty short work of this. You can see we're down to 28 now with this vehicle loading up. Next one comes through, is gonna bring that down even more. So we should be, yeah, we should be perfectly fine with just four of those. All right, I like that quite a bit. Uh, let's move back up top to Costa Mesa. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay, we're at 70 oil. And this guy, what's he running at? Uh, he is running at basically capacity. Okay. All right, that's good. That's why we're making so much money on this. Wow, it's going to be pressing it close to have, you know, 170 to 180 up and running by the time he gets there, but it looks like it's gonna be pretty close. So what about the refined oil, 59, 60? And this guy has a capacity of 72, he's good to go. 
And then it looks like, I'm going to guess our fuel is probably pretty good as well. All right, so we are, we're needing some help here. Okay, so our poor horse and buggies have, uh, they've run out of usefulness. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Uh, we want fuel two. Uh, eight of these, wow, I'm not sure we need eight. Let's get rid of two of these. I think six will be plenty. And we're going to use the man truck once again. And so let's just keep an eye on this. Get our window smaller. That is very frustrating when the windows are taking up all of your available room. Yeah, there you can see we are very quickly taking this down. We've got plenty of capacity. In fact, we might have more trucks than we need right now on this route. Uh, but this guy, actually, it's going to turn out pretty good. One more than what we need is probably about right. But we'll leave that as is and just let that run its course because it's not going to uh, hurt our profitability too bad. All right, now we'll come back in. Let's take a quick look and see how we're doing here. So 4.7, running very close to max capacity, probably most of the time. Okay, not bad. I feel like this is better than what we were doing before. Don't remember the exact numbers before, but we are probably in pretty good shape. All right, working our way back over. Let's see where we are with this train, very close to capacity. And yeah, that looks like we're doing very good on that side of things. Let's zoom into the city itself and just see how we're doing. Okay, so we're providing right at 100% here. Uh, and we're still growing quite nice. The uh, air quality is not good at all. But that really doesn't have as much to do with us as you might think, really. I mean, we're definitely contributing to it, but not as much as you might think. But regardless, this 100% here is more than outweighing the issues with the air quality. Poor citizens, you're just going to have to deal with the air quality issues right now. Let's see, destinations. Uh, you can see some pretty high line uses other than Costa Mesa. These guys, are we running out of capacity to Costa Mesa? Is that what's going on? Uh, actually, that looks like that might be exactly the case from time to time. Right now, you can see we're just below it. That is, wait a minute, to Costa Mesa. Where are, let's look at where our vehicles are along the way. So we've got some meeting here and here. I see one coming in there. So we could probably use with a little bit more coverage, but uh, overall it looks pretty good. Pretty good. Costa Mesa to Seattle. Let's go ahead and increase that one. And I'll tell you what, rather than doing that, hold that thought. Let's just come in and again, we're using 14 capacity on these models. Let's go ahead and swap these out. We want to go back to passenger and we'll use uh, the man bus as opposed to the Chevy just because of the capacity situation. So we're going to get increased speed. I like it. So for the first time, we're actually going to be putting these newer roads that we put in place. Uh, we're actually going to be using them for their uh, better capabilities as far as speed goes. So that is a very good thing. All right, so as we back out, uh, today's video ran a little bit longer than I would traditionally like for it to, but not too terribly bad. The main thing as we come back into our line statistics is that we are doing quite nice on money. Money is going along quite nice. You see here the road vehicles. I mean, we are up around a million or at a million on some of these city to city transports. We come into the trains, two and a half million, 2.4. I mean, big numbers here. And then finally, the airlines are doing great on their own as well. So money is moving. 
we'll continue to look for further expansion. Of course, right now we've only got airports in two cities, so plenty of room for expansion there. There's also room for cargo airports so that we can then uh, start to create maybe some cargo hubs for uh, different materials such as food that we see over here, fuel, uh, building materials, and so forth. So a lot of stuff still to get into, but that'll do it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more Transport Fever 2.